In this video, I'll show an indicator based on volume spread analysis, which is basically comparing the range of candles to the volume. The theory is that volume confirms price, and generally the range will be proportional to its volume. Let's quickly test this. We load in hourly Bitcoin data from a CSV. Let's view the volume and the range. We first plot the volume, then the candle range, the high price minus the low price. Here's the volume for Bitcoin 2018 to 2023. It's not very stationary, its value doesn't hover around a consistent level. Here is the range. The range will be higher when the price of Bitcoin is higher. You can see the wider area during the large run-up of 2021. Both the volume and the range are not stationary, so we can't compare them in their raw form. We need a relative measure of both range and volume. To do this, I'll divide the range by the average true range measured over the last week, or 168 hours. For volume, we'll divide it by the rolling median of volume measured over the last week. Now let's plot these relative measures of volume and range. These relative measures are much more stationary, and they have a similar scale. If we zoom in a bit, we can see the volume and range move very closely together. Here is a scatter plot of the two relative measures. There's a few outliers, but for the most part the relationship between them is linear. The correlation between them is 0.81, which is pretty strong. So yes, volume and range are proportional. What is interesting though is when the volume and price deviate from this relationship. Most sources I've seen about volume spread analysis create four scenarios. The first two scenarios are the ordinary cases. Large volume, large range, or small volume, small range. These scenarios align with the theory that volume confirms price. The two unusual cases are large volume, small range, and large range, small volume. These two unusual cases are of interest. Often the best trading opportunities happen when the market is doing something out of the ordinary. Technical analysis theorizes that when the range is small and the volume is high, there may be a large amount of liquidity on one side of the order book. Large limit orders are stopping the price from moving in a given direction, but they're still being filled so the volume is still high. This is often called absorption, and when the volume is low and the range is high, it suggests a lack of interest on one side of the market. There was not much liquidity preventing the price from moving, so a small amount of volume can push the price further than usual. I think classifying volume and price into these four scenarios is a little too simplistic. They may be effective with the aid of human discretion, but for an indicator, I want a more adaptive approach. To do this, I'll use a rolling window and look back at the recent values of the relative volume and relative range values. This is a scatter plot of one of the windows, using 168 candles. We'll use a linear regression to model the range using the volume as our independent variable. This orange line is the regression in this window. We'll use this model to predict what the range should be at the current candle given the current volume. Then we'll compare the actual range to the predicted range, and we'll use the difference as the indicator. Let's look at the code for the indicator. This function implements it. We pass in a data frame of open high low close data and a look back parameter, which should be fairly large. I used one week for hourly data. We compute the average true range and volume medium, then divide them by the range and volume to get our relative measures of range and volume. I convert the relative measures to NumPy arrays to be easier to use. Then we create an array for the indicator values. We loop through each candle. We start at the look back multiplied by two. This is because we need one look back worth of data to compute the relative range and volume, and another look back worth of relative range and volume to compute the indicator. We get the recent window of data. We use SciPy's linear regression function to model the relationship between volume and range within the window. It returns a slope, intercept, and the R squared of the fit. The relationship should be positively correlated. I added a couple of sanity checks to make sure it's well formed. If the R squared is too low or the slope is negative, we output zero for the indicator and move on. Then we use the current value of the relative volume with the slope and intercept to predict the current value of the range. Then subtract the predicted value of the range by the actual value of the range. This difference is the indicator. If the difference is positive, the current range is higher than expected given the current volume, and if the difference is negative, the current range is lower than expected given the current volume. We add the indicator array to a panda series and return. Here's a plot of the indicator across the data. It's fairly stationary, but it does have a few outliers. A function to compress the outliers, like the normal CDF or hyperbolic tangent, might do some good if you wanted to use this for a predictive model. Here's the histogram of the indicator. It has a bell shape, and it's nicely centered at zero. Let's look at some times this indicator has output an extreme value. We'll start with the negative extremes. 
A negative output means the current candle's range is smaller than expected given the current volume. The orange candle has a relatively small range compared to its volume. The VSA indicator read a low value at around negative 1. The price then went sideways. It might be that there was a large limit buy supporting the price, ending the downtrend. Keep in mind I selected this because it worked out really well here. This indicator is not directional. Here we see a low reading of the VSA indicator at a price top. The price tended to again move sideways after an extreme low of the VSA indicator. Low values of this indicator tend to precede a slowing or stopping of the previous trend. Here are a few more examples. But understand this indicator is not magic. The trend can still continue after a low reading. Let's look at times where the indicator output extreme positive values. When the VSA indicator outputs positive values, the range of the candle is higher than expected given the current volume. A lot of times high readings will happen at the end of a price trend or at the start of one. But keep in mind this indicator only looks at the range of the candle, so it can be ambiguous at times. Overall, this indicator can be useful for finding points of interest in the price, when the relationship between volume and price is not normal. In my experience, unusual situations are often good points to consider a trade entry. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching.